Friends, it's the X-Tool Laser Screen Printing Kit, and we're gonna make a t-shirt. So let's get cracking. Step one is the design, and we are gonna build ours in Canva. You can see that I started with a real estate flyer that gave me an eight and a half by 11 page. I don't wanna wreck anything in this one, so I'm gonna simply hit make a copy. Now we can launch it. The steps to build it were as follows. This is an added text block. You can see here I chose a font called Scripter. There are tons to fiddle with. Have fun finding what you want. And then to get the text to bend, I added the bend effect. I chose the number 60. One cool thing about this, if you click on that dot, you can use the arrow keys to tweak it to get the exact design you wanted. I am making a single color shirt, so that's why the entire design is black. I did that same technique down here, except this time I went negative once again, if you click the dot, you can use the arrow keys to tweak that to get the exact curve that you think is cool. I'm going to click that and move it below the mustache. If we do layer and I'm going to do send to back. Now it's easier for me to click out here on the mustache. This is just an imported mustache that I had before. And then this is a white chunk of text that says HL Mod Tech. I did switch this so that it was all caps. Now I want to take this to my laser program from work and I will show you quickly if we do file download and if you wanted to do the SVG which I want it is only a premium feature because of that I'm just going to do a screenshot. I can grab the entire chunk using a quick shortcut key on my computer. It instantly loads in Snagit and now I can do export and now I'm going to export that as a PNG and I'm going to quickly export it to my downloads folder just Bing. Bing. The next part of this project will happen in Lightburn. I'm going to choose file and I'm going to choose import and let's grab that image we just created after it appears. We are going to choose the option under tools called trace image. Notice it finds the outlines and marks them pink. That is exactly what I want so I can simply hit OK. If we move this out of the way you can see that turned out absolutely awesome. I'm going to quickly modify this so my font has upper and lower place. Right now when we click on the design you can see it is a single part. If I right click I can hit ungroup. Now I can click just on the HL Mod Tech and I can delete those. I could go one at a time or I could just make a box that surrounds them all and delete them. I'm going to click on text. I'm going to set the text right here. I'm going to pick one of the bond shrifts. Let's go with this one right here. Let's do that HL Mod Tech, this time with the capital letters and lowercase letters. And then once we get it into the center, if I hold down control, it'll zip right around the center of itself, just like that. And I can get it exactly the way I want. I'm going to select those two items. And now I want to quickly align them to the vertical center. Let's grab those two items. Notice from the right to the left, I only have to touch them. And I'm going to do Control G to group them. I'm going to quickly select all those letters I ungrouped. Let's do Control G to make them a group. I'm going to grab all of these letters. Notice because I'm going from the left to the right, it does not select the parts that we're not completely in. And I can do Control G to group. If you click on that, you can test to make sure you got it right. And now we can grab everything we made and we can do a line to vertical center so that it's all lined up the way it should be. All right, friends, now that we've got this built, let's select it all and we're going to do a fill. For this project, I'm going to tell you the numbers I found with my 10 watt diode laser, 2500, one pass, 75 for the power, and then 0 0.10 for the interval. If we go over here and we click preview, you can see this works out dandy with the dark on the outsides, and this area here will be left blank, so the color of the t-shirt will come through. We can close that, and now we need to flip our design. I'll show you in a moment how this looks on the laser. I'm gonna flip mine vertically, and then I should have left it like this. I also flipped it horizontally, and this 
ended up being something I had to fix later. I'll show you a technique to fix that, but we want to leave it upside down and with the letters on the opposite side. All right, everybody, as you can see, new screen. And last time my design showed up underneath this. So now I'm gonna put a metal plate under this so that we don't get any markings below using my same piece of two by four to make sure that it is square to the laser. Pull that out of there when I'm done. Real quickly, this end up here is what attaches to the press. And you can see this is the end where the buckles are fastened. That way you can have yours aligned the same way mine is. I have already got that height set correctly, so I'm just gonna quickly home this. Now let's do a shift nudge to move it out. All right, so as you can see, I've got a ruler. The 30 makes it almost each side, so I'm super close to the middle. If we look at this, uh, 15 is a little bit to the right, so I'm gonna just do some control nudges to move it over to that spot. Once again, move command, control nudge, control nudge. Until I'm happy. I think I'm gonna do one more. And I'm gonna nudge out here because I've got an idea. I may put two designs on here. I can move my shirt so that the collar's poking off, I think. Shift nudge, one more nudge. I've definitely got room around that. Let's hit frame one last time. That's using half of my screen, which I'm happy with. So of course, friends, it's time to grab some safety glasses and let's make something magical. Of course, there's no way I'm showing you a two hour engrave. All right, everybody, settings worked out fantastic, but I don't have it mirrored. So instead of redoing it, check it out. We are just gonna flip this around. We'll have to get the tape to line up the opposite way, but I think we can still make this work. All right, so with it taken apart, now I'm gonna try and line this up. So much easier with that piece of cardboard there, but the cardboard is not here, so I have to do it this way. I'm gonna get this one in. Don't forget flaps out. That'll be my starting location. Flaps out, lock that one in as well. Now let's get them in these grooves. Flaps out and lock them back in place. And let's flip it over and take a look. Holy crap, that's lined up pretty darn well. All right, everybody, so with our design mounted, uh, let's get it in place. It simply slides in and then you can lock it. Now, here's what I need you to look at make sure that it's going backwards when you put it in. As I showed you earlier, I had this wrong but then I flipped it around manually and it's actually turning out absolutely awesome. So you do have a chance to save your projects if you accidentally mess them up. Now you can see that my designs were going through my old t-shirts that I was testing it on. So I'm gonna just lay down a piece of paper to protect the board. And now we can grab the shirt. I've just got a gray fruit of the loom. Of course, peel off the label. Let's slide it into place. I'm using this tag as a marker to make sure I've got it in the middle. Took all those pieces down below. I pushed my design all the way up here because then I've got the potential of doing a second design down there. It just seemed like a smart technique. I'm gonna move that up just a little bit. So that'll be about three inches below. So now my design's got that paper. I've got it laying flat. And then don't forget, you want to loosen this and find the height where it sits on that design. So I've got this locked in place. 
and we're going to do it right there. Just simply tighten it down, open it up, and then here's another supply I'm using. I've got a place to put my spatula. I found I wanted that. I am going to add a piece of weight to this just so it's sturdy. We're going to work with the red ink. I've got paper towels ready just because I found that I have needed them quite a bit. Stir up my red ink making sure this is above the design. And then because of the thickness of this, I'm gonna go across the side of my design. I'll show you why in just a second. I'm putting a little bit less ink than last time. I had this a little bit full. Now see, I can store that right there, set my ink out of the way. Of course, we've got our squeegee that can be here with the magnet. And then see this way, the design is a little larger, but this way it actually fits. So now I'm just gonna pull that ink across. Notice it filled almost all the way, but I ran out. I'm gonna actually go back the other way. Let's just pull that smoothly back. It is now completely full. So I'm gonna press it down into place and let's put the design on once again, even pressure all the way across. Lift and we've got a t-shirt. I'm gonna scrape the ink off here. I'm gonna cap that quickly. And now we're gonna dry this with a heat gun. You can just let it dry in the air for 48 hours. I'm gonna just do this for about 30 seconds. Friends, as I wrap up, I do want to recommend that you visit makeblock.com. Of course, you'll find loads of awesome information about the X-Tool screen printing kit. You'll also find many other items you can add to your crafting area or also your STEM classrooms. And check it out, friends. We've got our own wicked cool HL Mod Deck t-shirt. How cool is that? Finally, friends, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Please also hit that share button so more people can learn about HL Mod Tech. Don't forget you absolutely make my day if you take time to leave a comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit the notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.